In this video, we'll cover how to create a Google Workspace admin without assigning them a mailbox, meaning that you get an admin account for free and you can actually create as many of these as you like. The steps are easy and as long as you're an admin on your Google Workspace account, you'll be able to have them done by the end of this video. Creating an admin account that's not attached to the mailbox is useful for your business if you want to increase your security by separating the owner of a business logging in to a super admin account from the actual super admin account. Or for example, if you want to share access to someone to help administer the account, but they're not necessarily an employee of your business. So they don't need an email address. Either way, you don't have to pay for a mailbox when you create admin accounts in this way. And you can actually use it to create additional users under your account if you want to use, for example, a single sign-on solution and you want to add users but not pay for a Google Workspace license for each one of those users. The only prerequisite to this process is that you have a super administrator account for your Google Workspace account because we're going to be changing settings in the admin panel. So if you don't have that, you need to go to the person who set it up. Maybe it's your business partner, maybe it's your web host and make sure you get access. But then we're going to log into admin.google.com to access our administrator panel and we'll go from there. Now, once we're logged into our admin panel, we're going to go to the billing section and then to license management. We're looking for the setting for auto assign licenses and we actually want to switch that setting off. Now this is on by default because of course, anytime Google sees you setting up a new user, they're going to assume that you want to add a mailbox for the user. So that's the default option for you anytime you start a new workspace account. Now, once we switch this off, anytime we go to create a new user account, presumably for an employee that's starting in your business, well, you'll need to remember to manually add a Google Workspace mailbox to their account from here forward. Now, after this process of creating the secondary free user, if you wanna go back and switch this auto assign back on, that's fine. It won't mess with your new admin user that you've created, but it's good to know where this setting is so you know how to change this behavior. Next up, we need to switch on a feature called Cloud Identity. And Cloud Identity is effectively the Google Workspace identity solution, just without mailbox and calendar and drive and everything else that comes attached to it. It gives you a username, a login, you get to choose the name of the person, and they of course have a password to log in as well, but they don't get all the other features and benefits that come with a Workspace account. We're gonna to head to the subscriptions area of your admin console, and we're gonna look for Cloud Identity, and we're gonna add that service. So now we've configured Cloud Identity, we can go ahead and add users without having mailboxes attached to them. We're gonna go back to our directory and then the user menu. And from there, we're going to add a new user. When we add a new user, it's gonna ask us for all the basics, first name, last name, email address as well, and of course a password so they can log into their account. But importantly, you want to uncheck the box that says create a default mailbox for this user. We don't want that because that will actually give it an email mailbox and we'll have to pay for that. Once the user's created, they can sign in, but we're not done yet. We need to actually designate administrator privileges to this user. Now, they don't necessarily have to be given the super administrator permissions. Maybe you just wanna make them a user admin so they can help reset passwords for your team. Whatever they need, you will go to the user's account, go to admin privileges, and you can choose which privileges you wanna delegate or assign to the new user account you've just created. Now, the next step isn't necessary, but it's highly recommended. If you have any super administrator accounts on your account or just in general, it's a good idea to have two-factor authentication in force right across your Workspace account. You'll find that in the security menu and in the login sign-in options. Now, what that does is it means that every single user created under your Google Workspace account is forced to have a second factor device of some sort to protect their account. It means that even if someone manages to get a hold of your username and password for your account, well, they're not able to get in without access to your secondary device as well. My recommendation is to disable the ability to use a phone number or text message to log in and instead use push notification prompts, an app authenticator code or pass keys. Now, final step to wrap this up is to check that the user was deployed correctly. You go back to the user in the user menu and check that the cloud identity license has been deployed to that user. And you wanna make sure that the Google Workspace license has not been deployed to the user. From there, you've got a new administrator account able to access your Workspace account, but you're not gonna pay for a mailbox on top. If you have questions, you can pop them down below this video. And if you thought this was useful, be sure to share it with a business owner you think this may help or an IT administrator who's looking to get better with their security in Google Workspace.